You know, just even a few years ago, capture card support on Linux, especially for ones that were useful for gaming or affordable, was in a really bad place. And it is so much better today. That's why today I'm excited to talk to you about the top 10-ish, even though it's closer to like 15, gaming capture cards for Linux users in 2021. This video and the original website post that was built to accompany this was brought on and inspired by some discussion over on our Discord server at discord.gg slash evilsvox, where someone was looking for Linux related, you know, Linux compatible capture cards and found an article that was recommending capture cards that did not work well on Linux, like the HD60S, the base S is bad on Mac and doesn't work on Linux. And I realized that despite the fact in every single capture card review I do, I mention my Linux testing if I get around to it and things like that. I haven't compiled a list of capture cards that are actually pretty good to use on Linux. We're doing that today. Keep in mind this video is in no particular order. These aren't ranked. These are just the list of ones that I've used. And so it's more or less going to be most recently reviewed to oldest just because that makes sense for relevance. So first and foremost, we have the Avermedia Live Streamer Cap 4K on the BU113. This is a cam link style capture card where it's just HDMI in, USB out, but it's also a UVC device. However, despite the fact that it's designed primarily to be used with your camera for face cam, video conferencing, and the like, it also supports gaming formats. So you can input 1440p, 144Hz, 4K60, and HDR, and HDR is automatically tone mapped to SDR. It can capture in 4K30 or 1080p60 and supports YUI2 at 1080p60 as well, which is nice. And it's actually pretty friendly with retro formats, as I covered in my review. You got 480p, you got the 1080p and 1200p modes of the Retro Team 5X. The 1440p mode does not seem to work. And then you have all five modes of, or all up to 5X modes of the OSSE as well. It connects over a standard USB 3.0, 3.1 Gen 2, whatever connection, and works pretty much flawlessly in Linux with OBS Studio with all video formats exposed. No messing around required. Costs about 100 bucks. Number two is the EasyCap Game Link Raw, or the EasyCap 321. I actually just finished editing my review of this at the time of recording this video. This is a capture card you can pick up from AliExpress or Amazon that's kind of knockoff sounding, even if you recognize the EasyCap name from the composite video capture days. Uh, but it's actually kind of impressive, even though it runs on an older HDMI standard, which is 1.4B. So it can input and capture 1080p up to 120 hertz. Uh, 1440p 60 hertz and 4k 30 hertz no sdr support or anything like that but it will do rgb 444 at 720p 60 and 1080p 30 and it will do yui2 at 1080p 60 and then you get nv12 at 1080p 120 but you can capture 120 fps and if you use it in linux you actually get the 120 fps frame rate option which you do not get in windows you have to just choose highest fps which is pretty neat uh and then it works with retro stuff just solidly you got uh, Retro Team 5X up to 1080p and more or less the 1200p mode and then you get the OSSC uh, all the way through 5X which is really nice the thing this thing costs anywhere from like $53 to $75 I paid 53 for it whenever I started reviewing it on Amazon it was listed for 60 uh, it's currently back up to 75 on Amazon for some reason so it, it's fairly affordable next up we have the Asus Tough CU 4K 30 this is another UVC capture card but with some incredible gaming performance for what it is from a company that you wouldn't expect it's Asus they don't make capture cards they made a good one you got pass through for up to 1080p 240 hertz 1440p up to 144 hertz and 4k 60 hertz and then you can input HDR and it will automatically tone map it all to SDR. You can capture 1080p up to 120 FPS. You can capture 1440p 60 and 4K 30. Uh, you get 420 for all formats. You get YUI 2 for 1080p 60 and below. It lists, at least in Windows, YUI 2 support at 1440p 60, uh, but there's actually a bandwidth limitation there. Pretty much no card will do YUI 2 at 1440p 60, uh, so you're limited to about 50 FPS there. This capture card also has a controller pass through port with a 3.5 millimeter four pole headset connection. This allows you to capture your headset microphone as well as capture party chat or whatever game sound you might have routed through a console controller. Uh, however, unfortunately, the app to control this as well as to update the firmware on this is Windows only. So you won't be able to run that on Linux, but you can set up your settings ahead of time on Windows, either in a VM or uh, through a dual boot or whatever, and then boot back to Linux to continue using it. Uh, that, that applies to the firmware updater as well. Uh, I highly recommend you checking for firmware updates before you actually use this. Again, otherwise works great on Linux in my testing, which was pretty stellar to see. This thing retails for about $199.99 uh, US dollars usually. I'd say it's a good deal in the $150 to $175 price range within context of the competition. 
If you're looking for a stellar budget option, the EVGA XR1 Lite is the one to go with. It is currently my budget king for sub $100 capture cards. And it's from another company you wouldn't expect to make good capture cards, EVGA. They don't typically make this stuff. They're doing great. You can input up to 4K 60 Hertz and pass it through to your monitor. However, no HDR is supported in any capacity and then you capture it at 1080p 60. You get YUY2 and NV12 at 1080p 60. 1440p60 pass through seems to work, at least from PC. Uh, consoles don't detect it through the EDID and you can get it if your monitor only supports 1440p, but if you have a monitor, especially from BinQ, that gives a 4K compatible EDID, then it will read it as 4K and you won't be able to force uh, 1440p pass through. It, it's a headache, technically it works, uh, but it's a headache to make work. However, retro gamers can rejoice as it works with all modes on the RetroTink 5X, including the 1440p 6X modes. Works great at 480p and OSSC works at up to 5X as well, which is really impressive. And again, works wonderfully on Linux. Happy to see that. MSRP for this capture card is around 99 bucks. That's a little expensive for it, given you can get the full fat EVGA XR1 for that price, but it's usually on sale for 60 or $65, at which point it's a solid buy. Next up, we have the Cloner Alliance Flint 4K P+. Plus, this got a little bit of a controversy when I released the review of it, because at the time it was kind of my favorite capture card release of the time period because of the flexibility that it had in store, which is 4K60 input, however, no HDR or 1440p support, 1080p60 capture, uh, YUI2 for 1080p60, as well as NV12. And it was just reasonably priced, given that everything was releasing at 200, 250 bucks at the time and worked really well. You also get a mic input, a line in input for routing from like a GoXLR or something and a line out output. So you could get like multi PC audio going here, uh, which was pretty neat. Uh, and it works great with the OSSC in all modes 2X through 5X. This is another one, which again, this is the point of the video, but it works great on Linux. But again, you are missing the audio mixing software for it. So you'll kind of want to set that up ahead of time or use an external mixer with the line imports and just don't run HDMI audio if you can avoid it. Coming in at number six, we have the Elgato HD 60S Plus. Pay attention to that plus because Elgato has a few different HD 60 cards. And I hate it when people, you know, DM for support and they're like, I've got the Elgato 60 card. And I'm like, which one? They've got a lot. The HD60S is not compatible with Linux and is not really compatible with Mac. It's usually a really bad time. But the HD60S Plus, which is newer and a UVC card, does work with Mac and Linux. It was quite an impressive release for the time. There wasn't a whole lot of 4K pass-through options, especially on USB, so it was nice to see. Got you 4K pass-through for your 7th gen consoles. Pretty cool stuff there. No 1440p support, no HDR support, which was kind of disappointing. 1080p 60 capture, YUI2 and NV12 available. USB 3.0, high quality, low latency, and one of those that just gets out of your way and does the job. Runs you about 160 bucks, uh, which is reasonable for what it is. Although at this point, buy the EVGA XR1. Effectively the same card for like a third of the price. Coming in at number seven, we have two different recommendations, and those are two of the more recent Magewell capture card releases. We've got on the USB end, the USB Capture HDMI 4K Plus, and then on the PCIe end, we have the Pro Capture Plus LT. These are 4K pass-through cards. The USB one allows you to pass through up to 4096 by 2160, which is DCI 4K, do normal 4K as well. Uh, at 60 hertz, you can input that and pass it through, Then you can do 4K 30 capture, 1080p up to 120 FPS capture, 1440p 60 FPS capture, depending on bandwidth. Uh, and then you've got YUI2 at 1080p up to 90 FPS, NV12 at 1440p and 1080p after 90 FPS, and then 4K 30 FPS. You can do 444 RGB capture at 1080p 60, however, which is pretty cool. This is kind of a rare USB capture card because there aren't very many USB ones that allow you to capture full 444 chroma subsampling at 1080p at all. Uh, the Live Gamer Ultra is kind of the only one I'm going to mention for that other than this. Uh, which is really nice if you need that crisp scaling for screen captures or color grading or whatever. Really cool to see there. The reason I mentioned 1440p specs getting kind of weird is because the Magewell cards don't actually hard limit you in terms of frame rate and formats that you can pull through. So most capture cards, they have set limits of what you can do, and that's it. Magewell doesn't really do that. Instead, they just kind of let you open up the floodgates and do as much as you can, and it will capture as many frames as it can until it runs out of bandwidth, and then you're just missing the frames. This one works perfectly with the OSSE up to 5X. This device does have a fan on it to keep it cool, but I've never once heard it. The worst case scenario is you'll have to dust off the little intake from time to time. And Linux support for Magewell capture cards is always pretty much perfect, and this is no exception. There is, however, a small caveat to that in that their software for the USB Capture Express or the EDID managers are not, they, they don't have Linux builds for them, which is kind of disappointing because they have the SDK for Linux and things like that. 
Uh, but so you won't be able to manage the like deeper settings of the card on Linux. You'll have to again VM or swap to a dual boot for that. But the actual usability of it, they support Linux very well, and I love it. That USB capture card, however, is four hundred fifty dollars. Magewell is a company that mainly sells kind of B two B, and they're kind of more of a very R and D heavy experimental kind of company that focuses on, you know. <laughs> developing and jam packing as many features in their devices as possible and they charge for it now both of these capture cards the pcie and the usb options have built-in hardware for scaling the uh, frame rate conversion up and down scaling the interlacing all sorts of color space conversion and signal mess around so that you can get it exactly how you want before it hits your pc to save on bandwidth and things like that which is really powerful and part of the reason it costs so much now the pcie capture card on the other hand the mage well Pro Capture HDMI 4K Plus LT. LT stands for loop through. That is quite the name. This is basically the PCIe version. It uses PCIe X4 connectivity for a lot more bandwidth. This thing supports, again, 4096 by 2160 up to 60 hertz pass through, 1440p up to 144 hertz, 1080p up to 240 hertz pass through. And then it can capture frame rates up to 144 FPS, depending on bandwidth availability. You got YUI 2 at pretty much all formats, MD12 at pretty much all formats, and RGB up to most formats. Again, you'll, you'll start dropping frames if you run out of PCIe bandwidth or throughput or whatever. And then they have a gamut of other weird color formats if you need various color spaces as well. This is one of the only Linux capture card options that can actually do native 4K60 option or capture, which is kind of disappointing, uh, but there's not a whole lot of native 4K60 capture cards on the market in the first place. And there you go. Uh, so if you're paying for it. This thing costs $899. But again, you're getting all these nice conversion capabilities and format support. These capture cards support absurd formats. Like you can even do 240p over HDMI with like a RetroTeq 2X in pass-through mode, which is wild. Uh, it supports the OSSE up to 5X. And again, works wonderfully on Linux other than the app to tweak it isn't supported. Now, this one also has a fan. The non-loop-through version has a much louder fan than the loop-through version. The loop-through version is still fairly quiet. Like unless you have a completely silent, no fit, no case, and you put your ear right up to it, you'll hear it. But otherwise, I never really heard mine. Oh boy, is it expensive. Coming in at number eight-ish, we have the Avermedia Live Gamer Ultra. This thing released back in 2018 and was when Avermedia really started to take over the capture card game a little bit, as it was one of the first capture cards to release kind of doing the things that they could do with it, which was really nice. And even since then, again, it released in 2018, there's only ever been one non-Magewell USB capture card to release that can do what the Live Gamer Ultra can do. And that was the Asus Tough one we just talked about that released this year. So that's how impressive the Live Gamer Ultra has been. It supports pass-through up to 4K 60 Hz, 1440p for 144 Hz, always hard to say, 1080p 240 Hz, and then in ultra-wide modes, you got 2560 by 1080 up to 144 Hz, and 3440 by 1440 up to 60 Hz. HDR is supported on pass-through and can either be captured in HDR in Windows uh, on Avermedia's RE Central software, or it's automatically phone mapped to SDR everywhere else. You can capture 4K up to 30 FPS, 1080p up to 120 FPS, 1440p 60, and then the ultra-wide formats in their native frame rates. You get NV12 at most formats, YUI2 at 1080p 60 or lower, but you also get 444RGB at 1080p 60 or lower, which is really awesome to see. The Live Gamer Ultra runs fairly well on Linux at this point. I had some issues whenever the with certain formats and scaling options whenever it first released back in 2018, but it seems to be in a much better place than it was back then. Avermedia software, including the firmware update tool, is primarily for Windows, up, for Windows and you'll need to run the firmware updater, so... That's unfortunate, but otherwise it's a pretty solid card and runs you about 180 bucks. Now, Avermedia also has this little guy right here, which is the USB 2.0 Live Gamer Mini. This is basically like a standard 4K pass through 1080p 60 capture card that compresses it to H.264 on board. And then you either get H.264 or MJPEG over a USB 2.0 stream. This mostly works on Linux uh, in GUVC view. Uh, which allows you to get the raw formats off the capture card and stuff, works absolutely perfectly. For whatever reason, OBS on Linux does not like this at all and does not let me change the resolutions or the formats at all. So you get RGB emulated from MJPEG and 720p only. So probably 30 FPS only as well, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, but I'm guessing that there's probably a fix 
given that it works in GUVC view. Next up, we have two capture cards from a company called Epifan Video. I've talked about them a few times on the channel. Epifan is another company like Magewell, which costs more than the Elgatos of the world, uh, but they primarily sell to B2B and they do industry applications. And some of these capture cards are actually on the International Space Station, which is bonkers, uh, but they can be pretty flexible. The AVI OHD is one of the first capture cards I ever reviewed back in 2015. Simpler times. <laughs> this device actually has a DVI port on board instead of HDMI, but it accepts VGA through the analog backwards compatibility, DVI, and then HDMI with audio support, and connects via USB 3.0 standard A to B. It has no pass-through, so if you're using it for anything other than a camera for gaming, you'll need an HDMI splitter. Support specs up to 1080p 60fps, including uh, 1920 by 1200 Resolutions as low as 640x360 are supported, and it does YUI 2422 at all resolutions and formats, and it works perfectly with Linux. Plug and play. Both of these AVIO devices are devices that have onboard scalers, DNR lasers, and etc. to manage your signal before it hits your computer, which is pretty nice. The AVIO still runs you $450, which I think is kind of absurd in 2021, given it that was the price it ran six years ago. You can find them on the used market, but brand new, that's what it costs. Now, the AVIO 4K is an upgrade on this concept. Uh, it has HDMI input this time, USB again, no pass through, so you'll need a splitter. And then this one does have a fan, but it's pretty silent. I've never once heard it. It supports input and capture up to 4096 by 2160 at up to 20 FPS. Standard 3840 by 2160 4K at up to 30 FPS, 1080p up to 60 FPS. YUI 2 is supported in all formats, although once you get above 1920 by 1200, it will be 20 FPS cap. Uh, and then you get NV12, YV12, I420 in all formats throughout, which is pretty nice. It works perfectly with Linux, but again, you'll need an HDMI splitter for gaming. This, however, Epifan is the only company listed here today that actually offers the firmware updating tools and the config tools for Linux. So huzzah for Epifan video. This thing will run you $580 if you buy it new though. Lastly, in the official list coming in at number 10, we have the Elgato Camlink and the Camlink 4K. This was originally released in 2017 and then was in place replaced by the Camlink 4K as an upgraded model for camera captures. Again, it's designed for your camera, but it can be used with gameplay if you're within spec and have an HDMI splitter. It's a UVC device, which means it works fine in Linux. It inputs and captures up to 1080p 60fps, 4K up to 30fps. However, there's no 1440p or HDR support and it does YUI 2, which is pretty nice. Well, YUI 2 at 1080p 60 and below, NV12 for 4K 30. On Windows, I have had a long running issue with the cam links where every time you reboot or open OBS again, it will have a black screen and you have to like hot swap USB ports and some people have issues with disconnecting. I don't believe this is as big of an issue on Linux, which is quite nice, uh, but there are better options these days because this thing still runs $125 US new, whereas if you're, you're in the US, at least the both the EVGA XR1 Lite and the AverMedia Livestreamer Cap 4K are far more compelling options. I did briefly want to give some honorable mentions to some other devices you can take a look at. Most Blackmagic design capture cards work on Linux with fairly great support, even on the software side. Uh, but they can be finicky to work with, like the Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K is just a terrible card, but their Decklink Quad 4K is an incredible card, especially for the price. Most data path cards also work great on Linux and sometimes have tools for Linux available as well. Most or all Magewell cards, again, work great on Linux, but they don't have apps ported for the Linux stuff, although they have an SDK available if you want to make your stuff, your own stuff, hit me up if you do that. And then some other AverMedia cards can work on Linux with some hacky workarounds, but it's fairly inconsistent in a rough time. So I don't recommend it. Like the Live Gamer 4K, unfortunately, doesn't work. Elgato's 4K60 Pro doesn't work. Also, of course, I'd have to mention all of the generic, you know, $5 to $20 can't link little single HDMI input capture cards. I've reviewed a bunch of them and talked about them on the channel over the past couple years here. Uh, they, they work on Linux because they're just plug and play UVC devices, but they suck in a variety of ways. They're super handy to have just on hand. So you have those inputs and the like for flexibility and quickly hook and stuff up, but I would not rely on them for frame, you know, for frame timing specific setups or where you care about quality or anything like that. You can check out my capture cards under $100 playlist link below for more information. I will have all of the original reviews for every capture card mentioned here today in a playlist linked below, as well as the written article, which contains a little bit more information and things like that linked below as well. 10 to 15 capture cards, Linux support detailed, tested in Ubuntu, Garuda Linux, and a couple other distros over the years. And just finally wanted to answer this question and I will try to keep these organized in a, you know, whenever a new capture card comes out in a 
Linux compatible playlist moving forward so you guys can keep track of that because I feel like I owe you that. We'll be covering some other topics in terms of Linux gaming and Linux streaming here on the channel coming soon. Get subscribed for that. Be sure to join us on Discord, discord.gg slash eposfox. If you want some cool desk mats and pins and stickers from our merch, head on over to eposfox.gg slash merch. Remember, be kind, rewind.